Hello everybody and welcome back to the ketogenic fasting project. My name is Tom and I made this video about uh, the PKD diet or the paleo ketogenic diet. This is a version of the carnivore diet that comes to us from Paleo Medicina in Hungary. It's a clinic where the doctors treat patients for a number of disorders. Most notably, in my case, uh, I relate to it because of their success with people of autoimmune diseases. But they also uh, treat people with, with severe cancers and stuff like that. So it's a fascinating thing to look, look into. I like to say that we're all the victims of bad information in one way or another. You know, we I know in my entire life have been told that animal fat's bad for you, meat's bad for you, meat's inflammatory, meat causes cancer, animal fat will clog your arteries, and that it just isn't the case. Just eating animal fat does not cause your arteries to clog, okay? There's a lot of research, research to support that, and that's one of the problems is that we don't so much decide what we want to believe as a truth, but more of who we want to believe. And sometimes just by putting somebody in a lab coat or uh, on TV or we give them a title or they have success at something, we tend to think that they're correct. And that's not always the case. And uh, ever since, who knows when, people have been anti-meat. So we can lay some of the blame at the foot of the Seventh-day Adventists who who uh, basically have a Christian spin-off religion that prescribes a life with very little meat or no meat. Uh, oddly enough, the they people frequently quote the studies that were done on them and how long they live. And it's the people in their community that actually eat things like fish, which is a meat that live the longest, not the people who abstain from meat. So, And then when you compare them to other communities that are, have very little drinking and smoking and stuff like that and who are health conscious, then they don't live any longer than, say, the Mormons. So, Anyways, that's just another deception. You know, I've talked about the China study. I think uh, when that book came out, it was easy enough to deceive people, but I think most people are a little savvier now. So uh, it's time for people to realize that plants can be harmful to human beings all these foods that we're supposed to revere you know you're supposed to be healthy if you eat spinach and kale and broccoli and all that stuff they're supposed to be superfoods and you gotta eat some exotic berry from some jungle somewhere it's all it's all bs really just because you can find some chemical that uh, killed a cancer cell in a petri dish does not mean that it should you should eat it in abundance in fact the truth is i think that when it comes to plant plant foods it really comes down to how much an individual can tolerate because most plants have offensive chemicals and when you go to the produce section of your store you look around and try and find a vegetable or fruit that's sold in that produce section in its natural form just pick anyone. Pick an orange, pick an apple, pick cabbage, pick corn, doesn't matter, potatoes, and then look it up and see what it originally looked like and then realize what mankind has done to it. A lot of a lot of a lot of uh, noise out there about micronutrients and nutritional density. Truth is meat's pretty much the most nutritionally dense food there is. It dwarfs plant foods only when you look at specific micronutrients do you really see any advantage in any in any uh any plant food and and the efficacy of of those micronutrients actually being health preserving or helping you live longer the science that's out there and the studies have been done really don't prove that people would like you to believe it's been proven people would like you to eat lots of wheat and corn and green vegetables and all this fruit but uh, it isn't necessarily in your best interest. So people need to realize that human beings evolved to eat meat. Uh, our ancient ancestors ate meat. Our parallel hominids that we developed with ate meat. The Andertals ate meat. The um, Homo erectus ate meat. cro magnon ate meat. Uh, every, every site that they habituated was full of animal bones. And when we do stable isotope analysis on the fossils, it's quite clear that they mostly ate meat. 
eating plants is something you do as a supplement. Obviously, nobody evolved in an area where there was oranges, apples, bananas, kiwis, spinach, kale, you name it, iceberg lettuce, romaine lettuce, strawberries, blueberries, blah, 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 blah. Nobody evolved in an area where even a fraction of, of what we eat today was available. And when they were available, it was only seasonal. And that was only if the other animals didn't eat it first. And that's why human beings evolved to eat animals, because we just ate machines that consumed the vegetation. It's quite clear from the fossil record that we ate lots of fatty ruminants. That our, was our primary, primary source of nutrition as we evolved as human beings. So I, I wholeheartedly uh, support self-experimentation for us people with autoimmune diseases like arthritis and psoriasis and stuff like that. Even people obviously with obesity and diabetes and a whole host of other problems um, really should experiment with their diet and figure out which foods are the offenders. You're not supposed to live with digestive issues. You're not supposed to have heartburn, GERD. You're not supposed to have, you know, gas and bloating and diverticulitis and IBS and all that. That's caused by diet. More and more people are resolving their situation by going on diets like the carnivore diet. I don't think the carnivore diet or the PKD diet is the only diet. I know you could go on a vegetarian diet of some sort that was carefully managed and probably a lot of people would improve their health. But when it comes down to it, it's what diet is sustainable, what diet you can adhere to. And many people on high vegetable, high fruit diets not only get nutritional deficiencies, but they have digestive problems. And many people when they go on a meat diet have the opposite problem. They don't have deficiencies. They don't have digestive issues. You don't get constipated. Some people might get constipated anytime you uh, drastically change your diet, you're bound to have some digestive upset but those things usually correct and usually uh, people are amazed at how calm their digestive tract is and how much energy they have and how clear their minds are and how strong their bodies are and how all kinds of old injuries start to heal themselves I had a t bad shoulder I, had, I frequently got problems with my neck I had lower back pain that was excruciating sometimes I'd walk around dragging my foot behind me for a month because I had sciatica so bad I couldn't roll over in bed it was hard to sleep it was hard to move and then the arthritis really set in and my hands got so crippled I could barely grab a doorknob some days and then the psoriasis kicked in and I'd bleed through my clothes it was it was a mess and I went to the doctor I took the medicines I took the advice and I just kept getting worse I could literally eat an apple in the car on the way to work and try and get out of the car when I got to work and my joints hurt even more just the amount of sugar in an apple a regular everyday apple was too much so people need to consider that these axioms we were raised with like an apple a day keeps the doctor away might really be the opposite of the truth so um, today uh, I am on the PKD diet which is the paleo ketogenic diet and uh, I was making I was in error when I started this and I didn't realize it until I was reviewing more material on it in fact I, w I believe it was an interview with uh, Dr. Sophia Clemens and uh, I was still I was still eating some dairy I was still eating some cheese still having some heavy whipping cream and uh, I was still eating eggs and I wasn't eating a lot of eggs but I do get uh, these really nice backyard uh, chicken eggs from my cousin and um, so I was I was eating them. I didn't realize that uh, those should be excluded on the paleo ketogenic diet. So I've corrected that, and uh, I've been dairy free f only for maybe a week or so at this point. So and like I said, I was eating you know a couple pieces, of slices of cheese on my meat or something. You know I don't drink milk. I haven't drank milk in a long time, more than ten years, long before I started uh, even a ketogenic diet. So. Anyways, the, the dairy was minimal, but it still might have been uh, holding me back from getting through my uh, what uh, the last phase here, which is basically just completely getting rid of the psoriasis, which got better but never quite went away. So we'll see here. The skin does look like it's healing up, and I have been taking photographs. So anyways, um, I, I encourage people to look at the different diets. Some people just need to go low-carb and shed a few pounds, and they'll feel better. 
Some people need a ketogenic diet, which is much more managed. Um, you know, you have macronutrient rate uh, targets that you want to hit. And then some people will go carnivore, and uh, that really, especially people who might have leaky gut syndrome, uh, it can help a lot. And then the PKD diet for people who have severe um, leaky gut or increased uh, intestinal permeability um, can use a diet like this to to heal up. And it's pretty amazing the testimony from people that have, have succeeded on this diet. So uh, what have I done lately that's different? I uh, went back to the gym. I, I talked about uh, how I've mostly been lifting weights on my own. And um, I have dumbbells and barbells at home and uh, at, the, at the office. But I finally signed up for a regular gym, decided I want to do uh, to follow some of the advice a little better to do uh, uh, more compound movements with bigger weights. So rather than going out and buying more plates and, and trying to find more room to lift, I, did, I joined the gym. It's within walking distance of my office, so just walk on over there. I've got it figured out when it's there's not too many people in there. I've been doing it for about three weeks now, two and a half, three weeks. And I've already got the squats up to 405. So I'm still working on my form, still getting working out, getting low. But uh, I was kind of surprised at how much I could lift because it was probably eight to ten years ago the last time I did a squat. Because every time I did squats, my neck would get screwed up. And eventually I quit going to the gym, even though I used to go five days a week. I was going to the gym five days a week and eating carefully. And, you know, I was eating quinoa and salads all the time. And, you know, I was just getting sicker and sicker. I ate apples and oranges and tangerines and bananas and cabbage and lots of spinach and kale and on and on and on. Trying to eat healthy, trying to keep the fat down. And it was the exact opposite of what I needed to do. So now on the PKD diet, I eat uh, sheep brains. Now it sounds gross, but they actually they actually don't have a lot of flavor. They're soft, you know. Uh, I'm having trouble getting cow brains. I think I got to lead on some pig brains, so I might be eating some pig brains before too long. But uh, I eat uh, liver, sheep liver, beef liver, calf liver. Um, I've had I've gotten pork liver too. Uh, the last uh, time I, I dehydrated some sheep liver, it came out pretty good. It's weird. The liver seems to be the thing. The more you cook it, the, the stronger it tastes. So, you know, not that I could tell people out there it's safe to eat raw liver, but uh, raw pig liver was actually the best tasting liver I'd ever had. So I wasn't crazy about it. And I've been experimenting. Um, I think I'm headed down the road of trying to make pate and stuff out of it. Just a lot of people have been having good success with that. And I really like uh, liverwurst and brunchwagger and stuff like that. Unfortunately, when you buy them at the store, they tend to have a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, you know, they'll have a little sugar and potato starch and seasoning and stuff like that. When you we have autoimmune disease, any one of those could potentially uh, be a problem for either healing up the uh, increased intestinal. Per- um, intestinal permeability or um, just floating around in your bloodstream and triggering reactions before you're healed so anyways um, uh, the liver you know uh, it's not my favorite thing but I, I'm interested to see if this protocol is going to be the one that's going to give me the edge and get me tip top and super healthy um, eating meat this has clearly made it easier to work out and exercise uh, I'm not going to push the raw meat because uh, it's tough for people to, to know where the meat comes from, whether it's fresh or how well it's been handled. But I definitely noticed that eating raw beef, I had raw, um, raw chuck, s- slice it thin and ate it, and I had one of the best uh, workouts of my life. I do uh, the the um, um, hit training the high intensity interval training on the treadmill or not the treadmill i'm sorry the elliptical machine i don't want my best ever i i went right past what my normal targets were and uh i have noticed that like uh, raw meat digests really fast and really clean like you barely felt like you're eating anything you barely feel like you're digesting anything i'm sure a lot of people have been out you know for sushi and they eat and they've eaten the sashimi or something and they're like man that goes down like water you know and they feel good it makes you feel good so there is something to the raw meat there but there's always a risk of bacterial infection you know you get get food poisoning so it's an iffy thing especially if you don't know where your food's coming from 
which a lot of us, you know, we shop at supermarkets or big box stores or whatever, and we don't really know the custody of of that that food, um, how well it's been handled, who's ha- handled it, did it hang in a truck and get get hot, or you know, was it rubbed up against some um, some old chicken guts or something? You know, who knows, right? But there is something to it. Um, some of the studies show that uh, raw meat is slightly more nutritional. But uh, even like the sheep brains I get, they're imported from Australia or something. I, I see goats and sheep and cows all every day, and I can't I can't get the meat. I can't get the brains. That's for sure. I'd be lucky if I can get a local liver once in a while. So the 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 food chain is is a strange animal. So and hopefully something will all get corrected, because none of us want to eat animals that were tortured or you know put down inhumanely. Nobody wants to eat food that's been handled incorrectly. And I I think most people who raise livestock uh, care about their animals and take care of them. I see animals all the time. I've never seen one be abused yet. And not that it couldn't happen, you know, behind locked doors somewhere. And, you know, I'm sure in some respects it does. But it's nothing like we're led to believe. So anyways, um, I just uh, want to make a, a note about that. If you want to do the PKD diet to help heal up leaky gut, um, the information on, on this is just coming out and starting to um, be available, more widely available. So, um, but it's, it's a lot of hope for a lot of people out there. And of course, a lot of people don't have to go that far. I mean, they can have arthritis. Arthritis seems to be really easy to, to fix for most people. Not for everyone, but a lot of people, they just go low carb or keto and bam, their arthritis goes away like mine did. You know, it took, it, it got, it was getting better within the first week. I noticed, oh, you know, oh, things don't hurt, you know or don't hurt as much and within a month I'd say it would seem like it was almost completely gone and now I go to the gym like I said I'm squatting 405 pounds you know and I lift dumbbells all the time in my hand I don't wake up with my fingers all knotted up and not able to straighten out I don't have any problems grabbing things I'm still kind of leery about damaging my hands because I had so much hand pain over the years I'm still leery about hurting my back because Anybody who's had really bad back pain knows just how debilitating, or even even neck pain. Like you can't turn your head, you, you're trying to drive, and you can barely see where you're going because you can't look over your shoulder. And you know, you, it's very easy to aggravate something like a like a bad neck. But all that's gone. My shoulder doesn't hurt. My back doesn't hurt. My neck doesn't hurt. My hands don't hurt. I still have a little bit of foot pain, but it's mostly skin problems. So hopefully that, that has gotten better, but it hasn't quite gone away. So basically my agenda is to completely get rid of the psoriasis, um, get the feet working really good, and keep cutting body fat and putting on muscle. And I, I have clearly carnivore uh, facilitates building muscle like nothing else. And I don't even really eat a ridiculous amount of meat. My appetite really isn't that big, so... Um, anyways, I've talked about that before. I seem to be under eating because I just don't get enough in. So I encourage people to give it a try. Talk to your doctor about it. I was kind of surprised how friendly my doctor was about it because when I started doing it, I, I don't see my doctor that often, but I'd already made quite a bit of progress and I talked to him about it. And he's like, well, he's like, it's hard to argue with results, you know. And, you know, I asked for a few extra tests and stuff like that, and he made it happen. I've taken him a book to read. I, I should give him some more books to read, and I encourage other people to do it because I noticed in one of the newsletters from a health provider, keto popped up in their in their literature. I don't, I haven't really wrapped my head around what, what they had to say about it, but it's on their radar. So anyways, if you guys are suffering out there, just remember a lot of this is about unlearning all the bad stuff that we, we were told it was gospel truth and uh, you don't necessarily have to suffer with arthritis and diabetes and um, depression and anxiety and joint pain and you there is there is things out there and uh, I don't I don't necessarily encourage people to just drop what they're doing and start a new diet but if you keep learning about it you'll get once you wrap your head around it and you understand it you'll be fired up and dying to try it you know because what medications can you take that don't eventually cause more problems, you know? Medications cost money. Medications have side effects, you know? And who wants to be a slave to a pill when they could just eat a better diet and be happy? And changing what you eat is 
is challenging for a lot of people and it's challenging probably for everybody at some one point or another but if you keep working at it and you start feeling better it gets easier it gets much easier and uh, you know maybe there's a little tweaking and tuning along the way but progress is progress and I, I like to say as much as we've all been the 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 victims of bad information there's no points for being a purist you know so the diet whatever you call it or whatever it is is not as important as the results so anyways thanks for watching please pass these uh videos along share them with other people thanks for watching leave me comments give me a thumbs up consider subscribing and uh hopefully i'll see you all soon